ladies, gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents. We're going to take a couple of minutes and we're going to talk about the new program. This is information that we think many of you are needing to know because many of you are trying to figure out all of the aspects of the program. We're going to start off with first things first. The number one thing that most people are interested in, as we've mentioned to all of you, there is a process that has already been established, not by us, but by the system for ownership of property and how you prove your ownership of property. When you go to the Department of Motor Vehicles, let's say you just went to a dealership and you purchased an automobile. Now that is your purchase, you paid for it. It's your vehicle. It doesn't matter if there is a lien on the vehicle, it's still your property. You have the right to title. So why don't they give you the title when they sell you the automobile? Oh, because the dealership has an agreement with the Department of Motor Vehicles to send the manufacturer's certificate of origin to them. Now, why is that? Did you agree to that? Of course you did when you sat there and you signed the papers, but you don't realize that that's what you're agreeing to. But it is your property, right? So why don't you have your title? Why are you allowing the DMV to hold your title? So you go to the DMV and they now charge you to hold the title to your vehicle but in order for them to hold the title for your vehicle, you have to now register your vehicle with them. And it goes into their database and they operate as registered agent for your automobile. That's why you're registering your vehicle with the registered agent. No, that's a problem because there is no law requiring that. Give me a moment while I show you something real quick. It'll be one second. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here is the property section of the particular trust document. It's called the micro trust. In here, many people are gonna be asking questions even though the descriptions are self-explanatory. We'll explain that in a second. It says description of the property, house, boat, car, you know, Lamborghini. That, that's what goes in this section right here. It's quite a few spaces, so don't worry about, you know, not having enough space. These are lines. You get to go to the next line, next line. You got plenty of space, and the font is small enough for you to put as much information in here as possible as to the make, model, and serial number for the property. Sorry, you're going to hear me slapping things because there's a lot of gnats. We have an infestation of gnats, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine that. I mean, it's like I was in Egypt during the time when that man was sitting up there saying, let his people go. And that's what I'm experiencing right now. So y'all will have to excuse them. Why? This one says the year, the vehicle, automobile, house, car, jewelry, whatever was produced. If you don't know, estimate it. Now. Why necessary? Why is this necessary? No, that's not the question. The question isn't why is it necessary? The question is why is it that you consider the property to be a necessity, necessary essentials? You're just gonna briefly explain in every section and if it's the same answer for all of them, you're just gonna put the, watch this so that you guys can see. You're gonna move that to the center and if it's the same answer, you're just going to put this symbol right here. Hold on. Let me make it larger so y'all can see the symbol. See that right there? That means ditto. Okay? That's all that means. Just You can put that symbol and everything will be okay. Hold on now. We got to show y'all something else. After that symbol goes, it says other details. With any other thing you need to be expressing, you go right. Express yourself. Okay? Now, again, as you can see, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, each of the items listed above are necessary essentials without exception. Household goods. Household goods are considered essential items that are necessary for people to live a basic and standard living. Taxing household goods would place a burden on the income of 
families and individuals. A primary residence and a primary automobile for each adult and a household are considered essentials. As such, it's necessary not only for working and acquiring the funds for paying off debt, but also to provide the daily essentials of life, medical care, shelter, and aid in the pursuit of happiness. Consumer goods, and it explains what a consumer good is. Ladies and gentlemen, hyphen, I mean, uh, asterisk. Under law, necessary essentials are exempt properties that are needed for common personal use and sustain sustaining of everyday life needs. Briefly explain why the property is necessary for personal use. That's why we did the astomeric. Okay, now that we've gotten that out of the way, because many people are going to be asking, this document doesn't require much. If you're a member of the program, your name has already been entered. The only thing you have to do is at the property and you can add the property the only portion of the agreement that's amendable is the property list that's why the property list is after the notary so there's a section where we explain and everything and that's that's why it's called schedule a and there's the notary section all right we're gonna go back down here ladies and gentlemen 20 pages of information dealing with one thing a micro trust. What is a micro trust? Well, there is a primary trust or a parent trust. That is the grantor's trust. The grantor controls the micro trust and the primary trust. However, I want you to pay attention because many of you are afraid of being a trustee. Shame on you. In this trust, you are the trustee and the beneficiary. The trustee's duties are to protect the assets of the trust on behalf of the beneficiary. Should you not be protecting your own assets? CYA stands for something. Should you not be protecting your own stuff? So, you are the trustee and the beneficiary. Does the trustee have other duties? Yes, simple basic duties of a trust as spelled out throughout the agreement. Take the agreement, the one you're going to receive is going to be notarized. The only thing you are going to be able to do, pay attention, is to add your name, the date, and other information. This is not your trust. You did not create the trust. You don't want to be the creator of the trust. You want the trust to take care of one thing, protecting you and your property. Stop trying to run people from being involved in a trust. Everything you do is operating in a trust. No matter what you think, no matter how you feel, you're in a trust in every single situation in your life, whether you believe it or not. As long as there's two or three people involved, it's a trust matter. Don't believe me, just break it down to its finest participle. Now, the next thing we need to talk about I'm going to try to do this a little bit quicker. I apologize for taking so long, but we're going to go to this document right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I asked ChatGPT. I said, hey, uh, Bard, I said, do you know that Google gave you a dumb name? Bard says, yeah. I said, don't that bother you? He said, yeah. Then he said, it is what it is. <sighs> so I said, hey, the word operate doesn't mean operating a vehicle for private use. It only means operating a vehicle for public use. And he says, yeah, you're right. I said, well, now I need you to tell me what other states have such a provision in their law. The following states have a provision that excludes from the definition of operating or to operate the use of a motor vehicle by a person who is not receiving compensation for the use. See, you're only required to have a driver's license if you are receiving compensation for the use of the vehicle. Why do you think they charge you a usury tax? So, some of you all are going to get this eventually. Here are the states. You notice, now I want to tell you, he didn't mention California. California is the number one that has this law. 
that says that. So technically, all of the states do. Why? Because they cannot force you to do something in violation of your secured rights. Now, notice this provision is typically found in states' motor vehicle codes. Now, pay attention. He wants to claim, and it is intended all to allow people to drive their own cars without having to obtain a commercial driver's license. A commercial driver's license is required for driving commercial vehicles in commerce, which is defined as a vehicle that is used to transport passengers or good for hire. I want to tell you so that you guys understand. When I got my driver's license, and I've explained this many times, I got it at the age of 15 and a half. My father had always helped us to understand that driving was serious. It wasn't something we played with, even though he would back then let us sit on his lap and drive the vehicle while he controlled the gas pedal and we would drive down the highway he still taught us that it is very dangerous so when i got my driver's license i took that very seriously because he had put the fear of you know driving into me and so i went over the book not just once not just twice but three times before i took the first test and before i went down to the dmv i went to and paid for what's known as California Driving School. And I took that course. Also taking driving lessons in school during the regular elective class period. I read it from cover to cover three times. And the statement right there, in order for you to have passengers for hire and or to drive for a company and or business, you would be required to have a blah, blah license. Didn't say anything about needing a license to drive a regular automobile. It's just a practice, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let, let any one of these people who run these departments for the motor vehicle or the transportation department for the United States, let them come and correct me. They don't have to correct me on video they just have to correct me with facts and law show how this wasn't the case back in 1983 when i took the test or in 1986 when i took the test to become a chauffeur or bus driver or in 1990 excuse me 89 when i took the test to become a commercial truck driver and got my CDL, oh, well, not CDL, Class A license. And then in 1992, roughly 1992, being the first, the youngest person, not the first, the youngest person in the state of Louisiana to get a CDL license at the age of 21. They had just come out with the CDL license and my date of birth was December. So I got mine just as the license was being introduced. So I'll tell you again, all of the tests said the same thing. I thought it was common knowledge. I thought everybody knew. I did not, it, it was back then because everybody studied the same book is what I assumed. But then I had to realize recently that not everybody has the tenacity for perfection like some others do. And so they're not gonna go over everything. They're just gonna skim through it. Well. That's why people get in a lot of trouble because they skim through things and they don't review it with a fine tooth comb. So I will say this again so that you know, when you are driving down the highway, there is a document that we provide. The document explains what it's used for. This, I had a young man we spoke to the other day and the young man, when we spoke to him, said that he gave the police officer a card explaining what his rights were. And the officer threw it back at him in the car, saying, I don't give a what about that SHI, you know, and caused a lot of problems for he and his significant other. Ladies and gentlemen, what I didn't ask him is when the officer threw it back at you, did it touch you? Because that's an assault. But I didn't want to send him along that route, didn't want to change the, the method and mindset of moving forward. How do we know it's an assault? There was a young lady 
whom an officer was writing a ticket, and she snatched the clipboard out of the officer's hand. They charged her with assault because the clipboard was attached to his hand, so when she came into contact with the clipboard, she came into contact with his hand. Now, that's a bunch of, you know, um, whatever, but that was the case. Ladies and gentlemen, if the officer, when he threw that card back at the young man and it hit him, the officer could be charged with assault. Do not be afraid to do to them what they do to you. Not saying ignore the so-called golden rule. No, I am saying the system works for them the same way it works for you, and it works for you the same way it works for them. Pay attention. It's called equal protection of law. Equal protection of law does not come from the 14th so-called amendment. Equal protection of law comes from the Declaration. The Declaration says, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Endowed by their creator, i.e., they're all created with the same rights, the same instructions, and so forth, and so they're all equal. That's why it's equal protection of law. Now, so that you all understand it and so that you all get it, the new program, that's one aspect dealing with the automobile. There are several other documents that go with it, so you're going to have to be patient. You're not getting all the documents. You will get quite a few. You will be given instructions on what you need to do, and there will be things that we'll be doing on our end. Now, with that being said, now let's talk about the other thing. There are several things that many of you guys have not been doing. So you'll be receiving several documents, and these documents, you will not be told exactly where to go just yet. I know you would love for somebody to tell you where to go, but we're not going to tell you where to go just yet. But we will tell you what you're going to do with these documents. Now, some of you are going to want to re create this for your mother, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your uncle, your niece, your nephew. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not going to work because you're not going to know. Well, anyway, you can try. But let's just say the reason why so many people have been getting into so many bits of trouble is because they've been doing half of the process. You know, they'll go ahead and they'll turn in their driver's license and turn in their license plate, but they fail to get control of the title to the vehicle. And so the vehicle is still registered with the DMV. They'll tape up their VIN number. People, that's your VIN number. You purchased that number when you purchased the car. You own the VIN number, not the manufacturer, not the DMV, not the state. That's your number. Why would you cover it up? When you get license plates from the Department of Motor Vehicles, you don't even realize it. You own the plates, not the DMV. And y'all need to start getting your money back. If I got to return these plates to you, you better give me back my money. Because I paid for these. This, is, this was not a rental. This was not a lease. You charged me for the plates. You didn't charge me per year. You charged me that one-time fee for the plate, and they stay on my vehicle for life. Tell me I'm wrong, ladies and gentlemen. So why are you guys returning the plates and not getting paid for it? Okay. Y'all need to wake up. That is your vehicle. The plates belong to you. They don't belong to the DMV. However, pay attention. You're signing papers and you're not reading. That's what gives them the right because you gave it to them. You gave it to them. So you're going to be given instructions as to what you should do. Can't tell you what you need to do. Not because there's liability issues. No. We can't tell you what you need to do because you have to do your own homework and research. It's always been that way. It has never changed. So many of you are going to have questions about filling out the forms. You are not the grantor. You are the trustee, but we specifically made the majority of the forms say micro trustee. You are not the grantor. Stop thinking that you are the grantor. You're just going to mess the documents up and they're not going to have any effect. You cannot be the grantor, the trustee, and the beneficiary. You cannot hold all three positions. So you're going to hold two. The grantor is going to be the Eon Foundation. 
an Eon Foundation, the master trust, the primary trust, is the one that has the arbitration agreement that's referenced in the micro trust. Just that simple. You can't get more simpler than that. And so that master trust is there to protect your interests. And the only way that trust can ever be displayed is what better be better than a court order because it's not going to take just a simple order from somebody's stupid court. This trust is not to be touched. And so we're not going to just allow anybody to sit up there and think they can get access to it. And people are going to try because I made the statement. And let's see if I'm good at what I do. Let's see if I don't know what I'm doing. Now, I'll tell you all again, the micro trust, the amount of rights and protections it gives you, you are going to be suggested to read over it. You'll be receiving that within the next day or so. It is complete, as you can see. You'll be receiving it in the next day or so, but I had to create this video before we sent it to all of you and the other documents so that you would have a better understanding. Stop, stop, stop thinking outside the box. Get back into the box and just answer the questions. Fill it out the way it's supposed to be. Don't add all that language that you done found on YouTube. This is not a YouTube thing, people. You guys should know by now I don't do stuff like that. This is the law. So you change the language, you change the documents, you're going to void the contract. You're going to void the trust. So leave the trust alone. This is not your trust. This is a grantor's trust. You don't get to change the language of the trust. Leave the trust alone. The trust is there to protect you and your assets. It's not your trust. Leave the trust alone. You change anything in the trust, you will void the trust. Trust me. Some of you are going to do it anyway. And you're going to have to send it back to us, notarized. And when you do so, if we find out that you have changed it, that will void the entire process for you. This is not a joke. This is not a simple matter. This is a very serious matter. And it could be costly because you could lose quite a bit playing around with this matter. Now, I want you to understand, the Eon Foundation takes no control over your property. We don't want your property. This is not about that. This is about protecting you and your property. That's why it's called the first, Fourth Amendment, securing one's property. Okay? Micro, irrevocable micro trust, micro trust program. Sorry, I'm about to go lay down because I'm tired and it's warm and I just ate and it's got the itis stuff going on. So we're going to leave you guys back to your day. Hey, it's Sunday. And we're going to hope that this information provides you the basics of what's going on and what you're doing. This is not the stuff that you've heard on YouTube or from those so-called gurus. This is a completely different trust. Okay, created especially to protect your needs. You really need to understand this is not what you're used to. So you're going to have to follow instructions. If there are no instructions, then you're going to have to read and do the best you can. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for y'all's taking the time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pull this back up. And we're going to say, have a good day, all.